Good morning, everyone. This is Kimberly Welch, and I am a principal consultant working with Maximo for 16 years. And presently, I'm working with Aquatas Solutions and have been for seven years as a project lead and the scheduling expert. So I get to go around and help folks schedule more efficiently, save their time, and utilize Maximo to its full potential. Today, I'm going to be sharing uh, some information about asset and location availability when you're scheduling work. This is functionality that's been there for a long time in Maximo, but not a lot of folks know about it. And if you use the IBM Maximo graphical scheduling tool that's embedded in Maximo, it adds a great deal of value to your schedulers and saves them time. So that's the goal, right? So here, this is the objective that we have today. I'm going to show you how to create a schedule for an asset and a schedule for a location. And what I mean by schedule is I'm going to show you how to uh, show a representation of a maintenance schedule, which is time that the maintenance crews and, and crafts can go work on that asset or location or an operating schedule, which is a time when we're not allowed to go in there. And that usually comes from an operation schedule. A lot of times it's something that comes out of a certain meeting during the week, usually a Thursday to look at the upcoming week's schedule, what assets are avail available and talk to the critical asset owners for your organization. So this is what we're gonna look at. It's very quick and, and fast, and I wanna make sure that I give you all the information I can. All right, so let's go to the demo. I'm going to the, there, Maximo. There we go. Um, this is my maintenance start center, maintenance manager start center. So I'm going to go ahead and go to assets and assets or hyperlink from the portlets. So once I'm in asset, I can go from the overall list. You can see I have 933 assets. I can look for all of those that are in this, a type of location, like a BR location in the demo data, and I have 15 of those records here. Now from here, I can set a location or an asset um, schedule for all of these at once. So I just go down to asset availability here and define the maintenance schedule. You can see up here, there are 15 records. It's brought in all those 15 assets, that group of assets that I wanted to work with. And it may be a line for you, or it may be a group of assets in, in an area, and that's fine. So I go ahead, I can create new row. And this is a maintenance schedule. So this is time that I'm going to be able to go in and do the work. So I can say on the 13th from 12 a.m. I want to be able to work on that asset eight hours and I put eight in there. I can tab out of that field and it's going to populate that finish date. So it goes from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. That's the time that I have available to work on this asset. OK, so I'll click OK. Now the opposite of that is um, the operating schedule. So when can I not go and work on that asset? So I'll click create new row. This is custom and I'll do a scheduled start date of the 13th. I'm going to start it at 9 a.m. OK. And I also want another eight hours. So I'm going to tab out of that and click OK. All right. So now for all of these assets, I have that schedule, an operating schedule for the 13th and a maintenance schedule for the 13th. The other thing I can do is go into a specific asset and do the same activity. So I go to asset availability. Now you'll see I have four of these. I can also manage the maintenance schedule. So I can see on the 13th, I have eight hours between 12 and 8 a.m. on which I can, I have maintenance, so I can go work on it. Okay, I can delete those from there and update them. And I can also adjust. You just can't have overlapping schedules. I also wanted to show you if I go to define a maintenance schedule, you have the ability to do the schedule calendar. This is where I could enter the same type of dates starting from what, a certain date and then put it every day, every week, every month and click OK, or preview and click OK. And it would make the schedule for maintenance on each of those days for that particular asset. And we can do it for multiple ones as well. Okay, 
that easy. All right, so I'm going to go cancel. And now let's take a look at locations. Go into assets and locations. Same exact action really, just a different application. From the list view, I can go look at location availability now. We have defining a maintenance schedule. I'm going to say that for all of these 714 assets, probably would want to have them on the same one, but we could. Go ahead and click new row, same fields, schedule start, scheduled end, okay, and the number of hours you want them available. I'm actually not going to do that on this one. I'm going to go into it, but you can do a define an operating schedule as well from here. So we'll go into um, the BR locations again, and let's go down to 430, I think is the one I wanted to do. Take a look at from within the location. Same rules apply, same functionality, uh, and just different dialogues name names really. <laughs> so we go down to the bottom. There's location availability, and I can manage a maintenance schedule for this. Okay, I see on the sixth I do have maintenance hours available. Again, maintenance schedule, so I can do a new row and create one for the thirteenth. Okay, and we're going to do that actually. Again, 12 a.m. OK, and seven hours this time. All right, and it's populated that schedule end and click OK. So now I have schedules for both on, of those weeks that I have availability of that for that asset. I would then go in and define an operational schedule the time that I cannot work on this asset. So do a new row. <laughs> And on the 13th, this time I'm going to say we're going from 12, 12, seeing where I'm going too fast, sorry, 12 p.m. Okay, and seven hours is not going to be available in the evening. Tab over and that will populate. Good. And I just checked the dates. Awesome. There they are. You can see there's a remarks field also on the right hand side and that can be set out there for operations folks if they have notes or comments that come with the but sometimes we would load this information other times operations themselves will go ahead and go in and update this in real time since it's very simple and they can do bulk at, at this we can pull queries of the types of allocations that they want to change all right so that's very easy so now it's the fun stuff we want to go over and go to graphical scheduling Planning and scheduling, graphical scheduling. Okay, cool. I don't know if any of you have Scheduler, but it's an awesome tool. It's very powerful and it uh, allows the schedulers to do a whole lot of stuff in a little amount of time. And I'm going to go into my weekly schedule. And the work order queries, this is how I bring in the records that I want to schedule. And I can go to the graphical view. Why that's loading, I'll tell you about graphical view. It has four quadrants. And the top left quadrant is really like a list view. Uh, you can move the columns around if you want to, like Excel. Uh, you can just filter it. Like this one is filtered for 11, 430. That's one of those <clears throat> assets that we set the schedule for. And you can go ahead and see um, all those records come forward and search. You can also do a quick filter um, up here similar to work order tracking and do a BR 430. It's looking for exact and to look all through all columns. So all these columns are also BR 430. OK, and I can also clear the filters if I want to. All right, so if we're looking at 11340. That's our asset that we had looked at. And now um, and first let me say actually before I move on, the goal of scheduler is to see all the work orders, to see the crafts and crews that are planned up here um, and they're visible. To the right, you'll see the yellow, which is the availability and hours, and then blue is those hours needed to accomplish the work above. These are the, the graphical representation of these work orders, these durations um, and all the information there. Um, this is representing that work order. So it's, uh, it's very holistic, it brings everything together and changes can be made very quickly. When you right click on one of those work bars and you select other availability, then we start to see the asset and location and the limitations that we have for this work. Red is our operational, meaning we cannot work on it. Green means yes, we can work on it. That's our maintenance schedule. We can see on the 30th, there is a schedule from 12 a.m. to 
7 on yep, June 30th. And then from 7 to 11, we can work on it. So it is visible immediately once that schedule is created in the asset or location itself, we can see it as schedulers. I was a planner and a scheduler in Afghanistan. Um, that's why on my LinkedIn it says Mr. Kim is because that's what I was called for two years. If I could have been able to use this at the time that I was doing it in Maximo, I would have been super happy. This helps us in a number of ways. It makes, it makes us more efficient. It makes us more safe because we can see when operations planning for us to schedule this work and we know it. We don't have to look at a separate spreadsheet and have all these papers lying around. It's all in one repository of information. So, and that's, that's very simple and it's very nice to have all this stuff in one place where the schedulers don't have to go all around to look for it and they can make changes. So let's just take a look back at the fancy PowerPoint, PowerPoint. Make sure that I told you everything that I was promising to tell you. Yep, we were able to create that asset and location maintenance and operating schedule. And we're able to show you in scheduling in graphical scheduler uh, that we can provide key de details to the scheduler by entering maintenance and operating schedules. And it gives them real time visibility on the asset and location availability without uh, without having to leave the scheduler application. So that is all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed our time together. I really would like to help you some more. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm with Aquatoss Solutions, and we have our, our website, so you can look it up and uh, leave a note, or go ahead and reach out to me on LinkedIn. Again, it's Kimberly Welch and Mr. Kim. <laughs> so, y'all take care, and thank you very much.